Hunter Biden is America's latest artist. He's going to be showing us really what's inside his heart and his soul. And we're going to take a look at some of these pictures from him very shortly. Now, this is not an art channel. This is not a Hunter Biden channel. We have talked about Hunter Biden previously here, but this is a bigger issue because the question is now coming up whether or not this is an ethical problem because Hunter Biden, who is this newfound artist, is selling his artwork for prices as high as half a million dollars, huh? which is uh, curious because we have some history with Hunter Biden. We know that he was on uh, you know, different boards, different, different organizations around the country with very little experience about things like oil and sort of international relations. The allegations back during the election that most of the people in the media never even talked about or covered. We talked about Tony Bobulinski and all of these things. And it was all just kind of swept under the rug. Nobody wanted to talk about that laptop with all of these you know, bad things happening on there, even though this was the president's son. This was somebody uh, where there were some improprieties that were being alleged that Hunter Biden, back when Joe Biden was the vice president of this country, was using his father's stature to influence a prosecution taking place in the Ukraine involving a company called Burisma. So a lot of improprieties are floating around. Everybody's been talking about it for some time. Everybody that really knows what's going on knows how this thing works. But the Biden administration, because they are now in power, well, they can't keep that grift up. So they got to come up with something new. Their solution, the White House is now going to get involved with setting up these art sales. Hunter Biden selling his artwork for his prices as high as $500,000. And so we're going to take a look at some artwork here in this segment. I've actually got, I actually have some pieces of his that I like. I wouldn't pay $500,000 for him, probably not even $500 for him, but it is still uh, something that I think is, is pretty good. Now, he also has some artwork on here that kind of looks like, uh, I don't know, sexually transmitted diseases. I don't know. We'll, we'll take a look at it. We'll, we'll see what they are. You can tell me what you think they are. And let's get into the story. All right. First and foremost, some background from the Washington Post. This is what they are writing. They say the deal of the art. Isn't that clever? They're so clever over there. The White House grapples with the ethics of Hunter Biden's pricey paintings. Yep. Updated that today. They say that specifically White House officials, they have helped craft an agreement under which purchases of the Hunter's artwork will be kept confidential. Let me just pause on that. The White House officials, they are involved in this. Okay. They are helping to craft an agreement. So it's not like Hunter is just doing this. The White House is actively involved. Hunter Biden's artwork purchases, which could be listed as prices as high as 500 grand, will be kept confidential from even the artist himself in an attempt to avoid ethical issues that could arise as the presidential family tries to sell a product with a highly subjective value, right? You really can't, how, how do you price art? It's a complicated thing. So $500,000 kind of seems like a nice starting point. <sighs> All right. Under an arrangement that was negotiated in recent months, a New York gallery owner is planning to set prices for the art. We're going to take a look at this guy, George Burgess. He said that it, it's, he's going to withhold all records. He's going to also hide all potential bidders and the final buyers. He's agreed to reject any offer that he thinks is suspicious. Anything that comes over the asking price, say people according, people f familiar with the agreement. All right, so this guy, George S. Burgess, which is just perfect. George S. Burgess, which is, is that real? Did he, did he make that up? Here, here is his uh, gallery. This is a screenshot from the George S. Burgess Gallery, which is just fancy. New York and Berlin, we can see those over here. And they have a list of their artists up here. So this was established in 2015. GBG prides itself on introducing collectors to the art and artists that will come to define tomorrow's art world. All right, so that sounds pretty nice. Let's see who is uh, over here as a part of this gallery. Oh, well, look at that. We have Hunter Biden right, right there on top. And in fact, if you click the Our Artist segment here, uh, you're going to see a lot of different names on here. And Hunter Biden is right at the top, my friends. And at first, I thought that maybe this was like an alphabetical thing, but I don't think so. We've got Laddie John Dill over here. So I, you know, it's a D and an L. And then we got Ford Krull, which is a F and a C. And then we got Hunter Biden. So I think this is sort of like a, I don't know, maybe seniority or something. I don't, I don't know unless I'm missing something. But they put Hunter Biden right here at the front right at top. And so my question was, man, like these other people look like artists. 
Hunter Biden, he's got a black and white photo. I guess that's kind of artisty. I don't, you know, I don't know. But he's, uh, he's also an artist now. So I said, wow, I wonder what it takes to be an artist that makes $500,000 for a painting. Maybe I'll pick a different career, right? I can, I can paint pictures of STDs. And Hunter Biden is also, uh, is, is also somebody who does that. So let's see what's going on here. Now, let's take a look at the other artists, right? The other artists, we're going we're gonna to pay attention to these people. We have Laddie John Dill who is kind of number one on this list. We have Ford Krull, who also looks like an artist. And we also have Hunter Biden. So let's do a, a, just a quick compare and contrast between these three people. Let's see what you know artists look like in terms of their resumes. First, we have Laddie John Dill. And we're not going to read this bio. It doesn't really matter. But he's got a lot of stuff here, right? He was born in 1943. And if you click this, you're going to see right here, you can download his CV which is, which is you know, very convenient. So you just click on his profile, download the CV. You can even just park, purchase artwork if you want. Now he's been with this organization for some time. And so if you, if you actually click his CV, here's what it looks like. This is only three of the five pages that he's got. So he's been, uh, you know, uh, Sana Ben Gallery 72 is when he first started. In 1978, he was at the Landfill Press. At uh, 1981, he was at Thomas Balbor Gallery in La Jolla, Joya, California. We've got New York in, uh, in 1986. When I was born, he was over in San Jose and then also in La, La, La Joya, I think is how you say that. Then over here in 1988, let's see, Cypress College, not 2000, so he's, you know, 1972 up to 2000, he's over in the Euro Gallery, makes his way over to Minnesota, back to New York in 2013, and then he's been just kind of select exhibits, 2017, 2016 over here, different awards and honors, and he went to a, an actual art institute over in LA. So he currently lives in Venice Beach in California, and uh, you know, I mean, man, that's a, like, like that feels like an artist to me. That's, man, that's solid, right? Solid resume. Okay, so if somebody, if I was, uh, hiring an artist, I'd say, Oh, I, yeah, schedule him for an interview. Okay. That's, that's a lot there. Let's see who else we've got. We've got Ford Krull over here. So, uh, you'll also notice that this guy, you know, he's got, he's standing in front of a painting here, probably his, and he, you can also see that Ford Krull also, you can download his CV as well. So he's got a big bio over here, all this stuff. So if we want to click over on his uh, CV, Oh my gosh. Wow. Another great candidate. So this guy, let's see, he goes back to 1991 and he's got an imagery series in New York. Then we fast forward to 2000, so about nine years later, he's been, been, been being an artist. He's over in Idaho. Then in 2010, he's still in Idaho, but he's also in 2009 in Washington and uh, done some other things. And then we have select group exhibits all the way from 2011 to 2015. And then he works from 1979 to 2004. So a long time, over 30 or 30 something years, I think. And now we've got solo exhibitions over here uh, as recently as 2000. 2015 and a big CV, big bio. So man, it's like, uh, I don't know who to, who to choose if I'm hiring an artist. I don't know who to add. Cause this guy's got 1991, probably the, the other guy, he's been doing it a lot longer, 1972, but you know, who knows? Very, very impressive resumes. Okay. So now we know sort of what the, the one and two people look like at the George S Burgess, uh, gallery. And now we can see what Hunter Biden's uh, resume looks like. Oh, so here's Hunter Biden over here. And oh, oh, well, there's, there's nothing to click right here, is there? There's no CV here. Huh. Well, that's kind of strange. So we can't actually see any of his experience, but let's just see what they're telling us. Biden has been a lifelong artist. <laughs> Okay, great. So there you go. Uh, he has devoted his artistic career, which we don't see anywhere, to both the written word, got it, and the visual arts, which we have seen some visual arts from him. We saw a lot of these in photographic form with prostitutes and hookers from all around the world. Uh, you know, no, no disdain for them. I feel bad for them for having to deal with this guy. A lawyer by trade who now devotes his life to the creative arts, which is nice. He brings a myriad of experiences creating powerful and impactful pieces of art. His painting range from a photographic mix, which we've seen in the media, to abstract works on canvas, Yupo paper, wood and metal. He incorporates oil, acrylic, and ink in the written word of his work to create distinctively unique experiences that have become signature Biden. Hashtag that, my friends. Signature Biden. Yeah, oh, that's signature Biden. Uh, Truman International the Pressure, signature Biden. Creeping on young gals, signature Biden. Money laundering with artwork that is mostly garbage, signature Biden. Don't you just love that stuff? Now, if you do want to do a quick analysis on some of these, these, these art pieces, well, of course, you want to look at how you price these things. A couple things you might want to look at first and foremost, the aesthetics of it. 
Okay, now this is not a deep dive analysis, but we also want to look at the supply and demand mechanisms, right? So like, is the artist alive or dead? Because if they're dead, there is no more supply. The pedigree of the artist is another major factor in the artwork, right? That's why we went through and we saw the CV of those other articles. How about the reputation of the art dealer? Oh my goodness, right? What about the art dealer? Think about these other artists at this, at this, at this gallery. They're going, you just brought Hunter Biden on here? Right? I've been painting for 35 years. He's been painting for 10 minutes. What are you talking about? So I would be sort of upset if I was one of them, I, I would guess. Uh, the press, of course. So the press is going to make sure that Hunter Biden gets a lot of press and a lot of money. Uh, art is done during a good or bad period. Also, the condition and the provenance and the context and the level of historical significance. So you kind of go through those eight different factors and you got to you know, do an analysis and see whether one of Hunter Biden's paintings is actually worth $500,000. We're going to get to the paintings here soon. They're coming right up. Before we get there, let's take a look at what's happening here. So the art sale from Joe uh, for uh, Hunter is expected to take place this fall. It comes with potential challenges, doesn't it? Not only has Biden previously been accused of trading in on his father's name, but his latest vocation is in a field where works do not have a tangible fixed value. And concerns have arisen about secretive buyers and undisclosed sums, right? Because if somebody says, somebody goes and says, hey, I want your painting for 500 grand. And you say, well, I've been only painting for a year and I really have no experience and it's actually a pretty ugly painting, but that sounds good. I'll take it. And, and who's to argue with that? Because that person subjectively says that the painting is worth that. Okay. Officials close to President Biden who have helped to craft the agreement along with Hunter's attorney have attempted to do so in a way that allows the president's son to pursue a new career while also adhering to the elder Biden's pledge to reverse his predecessor's ethical laxity, especially regarding family members. But the arrangement is drawing detractors, including ethics experts, as well as art critics who suggest that Hunter Biden's art would never be priced so high if he had a different last name. Yep. Burgess, George S. Burgess said that the prices for the paintings would range from $75,000 to 500,000 bucks. Woo. That's pretty good there for an artist with no CV from the George S. Burgess gallery in New York, which apparently just takes anybody now. So let me show you what Hunter's doing here. Here's a very, very, uh, a very, you know, close picture of him just art, art, artisting it up. And here he is, you know, sort of seated in his studio, which of course um, uh, is, is, is just very, just very humanizing, right? He's out there just painting. Now, the gallery in a brief online bio called him a lawyer and didn't mention anything about his relationship to, I guess, the president, as we just read. Some critics have praised Hunter Biden's art. Several contacted the post. Uh, the, the post found that the asking prices of 75 grand to 500 were hard to justify. Mark Strauss, who for the past decade has owned a gallery on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, said that among high-end art dealers, nobody would ever start at these prices for someone who has no professional training and has never sold art on the commercial market. Obviously, obviously. He says there has to be a resume that reasonably supports when you get that high. To me, it's pure. How good is it? And what's this artist's potential? What's the resume? On that basis, it would be an entirely different price. But you give it a name like Hunter Biden, maybe they'll get the price. All right. So let's take a look at some of the artwork. You know, I, I referenced maybe what I thought some of these paintings were. But some of them are actually like not not terrible. So let's take a look at this one, right? This one's not not that terrible. Uh, I would never put this up anywhere near me, but it is something that's you know it's not it's not awful to look at. Um, it, it's okay. It, I mean, it's something. We also have this one. This one's not bad, right? I might actually put that up somewhere. I think this 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 doesn't look doesn't look bad. I really don't have much to say about it. I kind of like it. I kind of like abstract art in general. And so this isn't bad. It kind of reminds me of a stained glass kind of painting or uh, it's something, it's not bad. I actually, I actually like that one. Now, there are a couple other styles that Hunter is experimenting with. I think this one is, I, 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 I think it's a painting, but I don't know if we're looking at a Petri dish either. This might be sort of looking down a microscope lens into some fungi or something that are sort of growing in a Petri dish. I think... I left some milk in a fridge one time a little bit too long. And when I looked into it, it kind of looked like this. 
So I don't, you know, this came over from the New York Post and they said this is another painting from Hunter Biden. And so he posted this on Instagram, which is his sort of fungi. These could also, this could also be like a, I don't know, maybe, maybe a, an HIV sort of snapshot. Like these might be the white blood cells and these might be the, uh, the, this might be the HIV virus that is sort of infecting the white blood cells that is then exploding and then infecting the other cells. So uh, this is why I was referencing maybe the, the sort of the STD work. I don't know. It's either moldy milk or it's an AIDS painting. I don't know, but it's going to be sold for $500,000 out there. So if you like milk fungus and fungi and, and uh, STDs, Hunter Biden's got one for you. Now, if you don't like that, there's another one here that I think this is a, uh, a stain or something that was spilt. I'm, I, I, oh, no, they're telling us that this is a painting of a flower here from Hunter Biden. Um, a flower, which I've never, <laughs> I've never seen a flower that looks like, quite like that. But they're telling us it's a flower. He posted that on Instagram. I, I think it's a stain. I don't know if it is. Uh, it could be a Rorschach test. You know, some, there's some psychology books that have things that look like this as well. But these could also be some of the, the, uh, the HIV AIDS uh, white blood cells as well. I, I, don't, I don't really know uh, what this is either. I don't think it's a flower, but again, right? You know, we wanna, we wanna help Hunter Biden out a little bit here. If that looks appetizing for you, if you wanna put that up in your home, right, if, right in front of your bed. So you walk home and you, before you lay down to sleep, you go, oh man, it's a beautiful flower, beautiful flower. Well, then it's available now at the George S. Burgess gallery in New York. So you can go check that out. And, uh, and lastly, if the first two kind of didn't do the STD thing for you, I, th I think he really, it's hard to be an artist because you get better with time. You're like, have you seen artists when they start working on a human face or like they try to draw a human eyeball? It's hard, right? It's hard to, to get the details just right. So, you know, the first painting may have been, you know, sort of AIDS one. And then we had, uh, the, the spilt flower, whatever that was, but he's getting he's getting better. You can see just day by day. This, my friends, is uh, I think this is COVID. This is uh, the masterpiece called COVID. And I, this art consultant, Martin Galindo, agrees. He says he thought this Hunter Biden, Biden painting looks just like COVID. Right here, he says that in the New York Post. And I think he's right. It's it's either COVID or like this is the result of his trip to you know the brothels where he's got a little bit of everything. I guess I, I, I think. I think this is how he does his HIV, his gonorrhea is probably over here. We've got, uh, you know, chlamydia and some of the other ones just kind of just floating around Hunter Biden's paintings. And, it, you know, bec because of some of the imagery that we saw on the laptop, they're just all ugh, going in together right in one right in one painting there. So, I mean, 500 grand, my friends, that's a steal. You can get that right there. Just, just go, you go, go to the gallery, George S. Burgess, they'll have it for you. So he says that through his attorney, let's see. Yes. Let's see what else we have here. Hunter Biden, then through his attorney, they did not respond to an interview request. Of course, when asked about the artwork, including the term of sale and the potential ethics concerns, Clark referred those questions to the white house. So his own, his lawyer says, Hey, don't talk to us, go talk to the white house. So then they go to the white house and Andrew Bates, the deputy white house press secretary suggested that buyers confidentiality would ensure the process is ethical, right? Because if, if you don't know that there is somebody who wants to launder money to you, if you don't know the name of that person, then it's suddenly ethical because you don't know who it is. So he says, the president has established the highest ethical standards of any administration in American history. Wow, that's a, that's a nice statement. And his family's commitment to rigorous processes like this is a prime example. So they want to just hide everything, essentially, right? The buyer's confidentiality would ensure ethical. Now, Burgess, the gallery owner, he also did not respond to several requests for comment, but the arrangement was described by two officials familiar with it who spoke on the condition of anonymity. They were not authorized to disclose it publicly. A person, a person who initially said she, will be, she was calling on behalf of Burgess, but then said she couldn't be quoted by name, confirmed that all sales would be kept secret and described any agreement as nothing unusual. Now, some experts, though, are arguing that the best protection against influence seeking would be transparency, not secrecy. That way, the public would know whether, say, a lobbyist had paid an exorbitant price. Okay, what happens if Hunter Biden's out doing one of his things that he does regularly, 
and somebody who's a lobbyist, somebody who has a, a little bit of want to get close to him or to get close to the president or to get close to any sort of policy change that might happen. And we all know that Hunter Biden is the smartest person on the planet, according to Joe Biden. He said that. He's the smartest man I know. He's brilliant. Okay. So if that wanted to happen, if Hunter Biden's out at one of his extracurricular activities, he's out at a bar, he's out at a restaurant, and somebody comes up and says, hey there, Hunter, uh, you know, really love that art you got over there. I, uh, I'd, I'd like to buy a, a piece from you, 500000 no problem at all. Happy to do that. But while we're having this conversation, also, just want to let you know about this thing also as well. Okay, just, just, just uh, you, I, I don't need to hear back from you. Don't need to respond to anything. I just want to let you know that this policy is kind of important to me. And I really like your art, like a lot. So whatever you just put out there, you just let me know. Send me an email. I'm going to buy it. But, but when we're talking, I just want to also let you know that I don't like that thing that is happening. Anything you can do about that? Oh, don't, 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 don't cross that line, of course. And nobody knows. It's just some guy who just likes art. And Hunter Biden's brilliant. Well, well, it's, he's an artist. Okay. So the officials then helped craft an agreement. They said that if buyers were publicly disclosed, it would restrict interest because the identities of most art pur purchasers are not automatically made to the public. So it's like, I oh, know this is just standard. There is also a secondary market. So even a publicly identified buyer might not be the one who ultimately bought the art. So what they're telling you here, my friends, is that this is basically built for money laundering. And so that's why they're just shoving Hunter Biden into this thing. White House officials probably would be warned against giving that person any preferential treatment if the identity does become public. So probably. So that's good. And they could be discouraged from working with them at all, according to a per person familiar with the arrangement. So probably would be warned and could be discouraged from working with them, but not really. That's what's going on right there in the White House. Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, the, the, uh, the most transparent and accountable administration in history. All right. What a stinking joke. Let's get, take a look over at some questions from watching the watchers locals.com and see what's going on in here. We have uh, Jack Elias says, to be honest, I feel pity for Hunter Biden. It cannot be easy growing up in the pressure cooker of a political crime family. That's true. You know, it is true. I like to make fun of the guy, but he's a, he's an addict, right? I empathize with that. I get it. But I also don't, I, I don't, you know, just because you're an addict, just because you're somebody that has that struggled with some of that stuff doesn't mean you get to be a piece of garbage. Right. That's not an excuse. And when people say that, well, well, I was I, you know, I was an addict. Oh, OK, so you get to be a jerk for 20 years. You get to abuse women for 20 years and sort of, you know, run on the back of, the, of your father's political co coattails for 20 years. Right. I'm tired of the addict excuse. OK, I know a lot of addicts that are amazing people and they would never do any of that stuff. So this hunter by, well, you know, the whole thing. It is hard that he is in a, you know, in a in a crime family, no doubt about that. And I think that any kid that kind of grows up in that environment is probably going to be severely damaged. But, uh, you know, but but Hunter Biden is not the white knight that the media is trying to make him out to be. Thunder seven says, this is your brain on crack. Probably one of his paintings. Let's see what else we've got. Kareem says COVID. Does he mean SARS cov too? We have Josh Sesco says, I think I'd rather buy a Hitler painting. At least his didn't look like it was made by a crackhead. <laughs> Jack Elias says money laundering is a little more class than Kim Klasik says Jack Elia. I think she she was running, right? She was running, I think, in Baltimore. Uh, let's see what else we have. Joe Snow says, Rob, don't read mine. All right. Uh, ZZ the Boxing Cat says, Democrats always lift up the grifters. We have three girlies is here. Good to see you. I'm not gas is here. Says, this naked corruption is expected from the Bidens. But where the hell are the Republicans? This is so blatantly obvious, more than Hillary or Obama's $500,000 speaking fees. Yes. The speaking fees. Yes. I forgot about those. Yeah. Those are also great, right? Hillary Clinton flies in there, talks for an hour, goes out in front of Goldman Sachs and says, well, but, 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 muddles off something about foreign policy and something 225,000 bucks right there. Right. Here you go. Here you go. And probably a whole bunch of other benefits for board and hotel and first class and private, all this all right now. It's just now, Hunter, because he can't speak very well, as we know from his interview, he uh, he's just going to just paint. It's even easier. You don't even have to go anywhere. You just draw your STDs on your canvas and somebody will pay 500 grand for them. 
Good to see you. I'm not gas. Great comment. We have, oh, Hack Consulting says La Jolla for La Jala. So I'll, I'll, I'll correct that. Thank you, Hack. We have some other questions. Let's see. Robert Gruler says, uh, no, some, that's my name. Joe Snow says, the locals chat is spicy. Tell the YouTubers to get in here. It is spicy. That's why I have to uh, be a little bit, uh, you know, I got to gotta be careful here. We have, who's next? Be Brave says, if Hunter's art is legit, can he wait until his dad is no longer president to sell the art? That's a great question. Yeah, that's a good question. Why wouldn't he wait, right? Um, well, I don't know, because he can sell it now. Uh, let's see, we've got, <laughs> we've got, we got some good questions, some spicy stuff going on over there. So we're going to wrap it up my, there, my friends. I want to say thank you to everybody uh, over at the watchingthewatchers.locals.com chat. Good stuff happening over there, YouTube and uh, Facebook and Twitch and Rumble over at watchingthewatchers.locals.com, having some fun in there. And uh, hopefully this new format's working a little bit. I know, I know it's a little bit different not seeing the chats on the screen, but it really uh, sort of makes it a little bit more streamlined. I, I can sort of run the whole show myself. So hopefully that's okay. Before we wrap up this segment, quick reminder, I'm a criminal defense lawyer here at the r, &R Law Group. We're located in Scottsdale, Arizona. We are extremely passionate about helping good people facing criminal charges. That's what we, that's what we do. You know, every day we get on this channel and I want to make sure that we are addressing things from the public facing perspective, but we also have to recognize that there are many people who are in the system that need our help. And we've got a whole team of people that we wake up and we, that's it. Boom. Grind it out every day to make sure that we are getting people the results they deserve because we want to help them get their lives back on the right path. And the system is not set up to do that. So our mission is to help good people find safety, clarity, and hope in their cases. And beyond that, in their lives, if you know anybody in the state of Arizona that is facing a criminal charge, we would love the opportunity to help the phone number here, 480-787-0394, also available online by taking a picture of that QR code or visiting rrlawaz.com. You can also schedule a free case evaluation online as well. We would love the opportunity to help. If you don't need legal services, very, very good news. You may want to make sure that you prevent the need for legal services by getting my law enforcement interaction training, which is a two and a half hour program that will teach you how to deal with the police during an interaction. It's the one, two, three rule. There's only one rule you need to re remember. It's this. There are two questions that the police can ask you, and there are three responses that you can fire back if they're asking you an unapproved question. So go check that out at gumroad.com slash Robert Gruler. Quick reminder, we had some new members who signed up yesterday. I'm going to update this for tomorrow, but quick shout out to all of you who signed up yesterday, including that one Florida man and realtor Patty who signed up over there for the year. So they're going to be with us for a while. And welcome also to Copper Lobo, Justice Obsessed, and Chop. And there were others. I'm going to update this list tomorrow. But if you'd like to join, the place to do that is at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. Five bucks a month or 50 bucks a year, and it really helps support the show. Uh, as you know, we're demonetized on YouTube. And so, you know, that's sort of how we are uh, building a, a, a separate community. There's a lot of good stuff that's taking place over there, including a live monthly meetup that takes place on Zoom on Saturday, July 24, 2021. If you're already registered, you're good to go. But I'm going to repost the registration form as the date nears. It's available for free to anybody who's a member over at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. And it's a lot of fun. We had about 37 people on last time. About half the, the audience had the camera on, about half people had their cameras off, and you know maybe the, the FBI agents were in there, I don't know. But the point is, we learned a lot. We got to hear from people from other parts of the world, we got to hear from people from other professions, and sort of get a, a, a variety of perspectives on some of the things that we talk about here, and it really is, it really is a lot of fun. It was powerful. It's sort of like a more intimate version of a clubhouse room because you can kind of see everybody and it's just a lot of fun. So come check that out, watchingthewatchers.locals.com. And I've got some other ideas and some things that I want to work on to build the community up a little bit, like maybe a community directory where we can kind of support each other's projects. Like if you've got a YouTube channel and you, you know, maybe you're creating some content that might be you know, sort of synergistic with some of the things that we're talking about here. I have no problem supporting the heck out of that because I think we need more people standing up and speaking out. And if you're writing or speaking and you're doing something on behalf of uh, freedom in this country, well, I want to support the hell out of you. So we're going to talk about all of that and more at this upcoming uh, Watching the Watchers monthly Zoom meetup. I'm looking forward to that. So please check that out and be sure to check out some of the links in the description below. I've got like three videos queued up for the crypto channel. I just haven't 
recorded them yet. Things have been, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, let's say, uh, dynamic here at the office this week. So we are uh, adjusting on the fly, but we're, we're going to make do. And I want to just invite you to come check us out on some of those other channels. We are going to get back in the routine of publishing those. And I also, by the way, I also uploaded a video on TikTok. The link is down in the description. I tried this new format out where I can sort of do my slide switching also on the TikTok vertical format. So we're going to be playing around with those. We're, we're trying some new things. My friends, we're trying to sort of, you know, expand a little bit. And of course, I always appreciate all your help on this. We've got something special happening over here. And so I, I really am grateful for all of you. So that is it for me, my friends. We're going to be back here same time, same place tomorrow, same location at 4 p.m. Arizona time, 5 p.m. Mountain, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. on that East Coast. And for that one Florida man out there, everybody else have a wonderful evening. I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Bye-bye.